I am not an archaeologist. I am not a professor. So what are my credentials? I am a member of ICOMOS, and I hope to build my credentials with a few words after the film. There is no denying global warming reached our shores. It is here to stay. Its impact felt the world over. Tidal waves rip the coast apart. Bulging water takes over our cities, changing our lives, changing our livelihoods, destroying what we hold dear, what we cherish, what we believe in. Our gods, our temples, our heritage, all washed away forever. What a great achievement. Global population grew from one to seven billion and counting. Every day the number grows. And while cities expand, even greater numbers flock the streets. However, almost half of us live in coastal areas, in river deltas, on the shore, and some below the sea. And still the water is rising. It is striking, actually, how nature is replaced by harbors. Big ships where birds used to roam. Inner cities getting clogged up and offices built on historical grounds. Concrete forcing the water upwards, not letting it seep into the ground and taking away the landmarks that generations knew. Still, our ways of dealing with water are similar the world over. Fighting it, fleeing from it, and freezing it in concrete and sand. Because, in our perpetual fight against the water, we humans invent new ways to face new challenges, and our genius takes over. However, history tells us that moving sand is not enough to protect us, that we should work not against the water, but with it. Because by understanding the water, we all benefit using the river, irrigating the land and protecting it against floods. In Dujiang, the system works 2,000 years and continuing today. And isn't this spectacular? Harnessing the water since Darius the Great, feeding the city and the land, the operating system, five centuries BC. Heritage is still used in Europe as well. Steam engines pump water since a hundred years, providing capacity when situations require. Also, ecological farming is nothing new. A complex system of canals and terraces, rice, buffalo, cattle and fish, since a thousand years, all combined. Maintenance is key to keep water heritage working. And when done properly, it will stay for centuries and inspire generations to come. Still, danger is lurking in the canals. When old systems are not maintained, neglected or ignored, we all suffer badly. Since ancient times, water feeds people's lives, their rituals and religions, important for humans all over the world, each and every one in their own way. Practical things are settled by ritual as well, like water disputes in Spain. The court gathers since the times of El Andalus, settling disputes in public, bringing peace to the people. Protected by the temples and overseen by the gods, water is sacred, and sometimes it shows, like the river feeding into Angkor Wat. 
Shiva's linga fecundates the water and the land, thus providing food for a hundred villages or more. Water forgives, consoles, and gives hope. So let's learn from the past, because the solutions are there, and in the present, combining them, like yin and yang. Living on the water is what we do, in different ways, in different cultures, and in different styles. Whether we live above the water, or below it, or reclaim it, we have to live with it. We can learn from each other to do so, how to manage water well, how to use heritage, and how to use the knowledge of ancient times. Saving the world's deltas is critical for the future of us, our children, and generations to come. The number of disasters increases, and so does their intensity. Civilizations are at risk, and fast urbanization of delta areas without respecting historical water structures, makes them even more vulnerable. But heritage helps by providing valuable examples and successful strategies to deal with uncertainty and risk. Centuries-old knowledge is the key of living with water and water structures passed on over generations. These will offer solutions for the future. We believe that harmony between water and heritage management will improve spatial quality and contribute to the preservation of civilizations and ultimately to the well-being of mankind. So, how does water management, how does this heritage play a role as a source of inspiration in planning and in policies of today and tomorrow. Now this question seems obvious, but it is not. When I talk to my colleagues in the water world, and I've been working for 40 years in the water world, these colleagues are saying, your storyline, drawing lessons from cultural heritage, water related, we don't know it. And I know it also from my own professional experience that we don't consider the past as a source of inspiration for the future. Now to build that storyline, that's what is exciting. To bring archaeologists, historians, and to challenge them, not just to preserve the past, not to solidify pride if I'm cynical, but what is the relevance for tomorrow? This question is hard, I've understood, and it is, I think, also very important, very relevant. Now, <clears throat> what we've done, we started in 2012 with Diederik Six. He is the president of the Dutch ICOMOS um, committee, and he asked me, because I'm from the water world, let's make a bridge together. And one example is a manual, just a very practical example, water heritage and environment. We are aiming to produce a lot of these examples for the water community, coming from the archaeological, the historical communities, bridging them. And as I said, I'm the one to carry it into the water world. Last year, at the General Assembly of ICOMOS in Delhi, we were given the go-ahead with the establishment of a new International Scientific Committee, Water and Heritage. Next year, June, we have an international conference in Taiwan to kick off clusters, themes of researchers both in history archaeology, etc., and from the water community. And what we do is to bring International Scientific Committee members, different ones, from ICOMOS, ICORP, ICAM, uh, ICCI, etc., bring them together with people, researchers from the water community, and the big international water organizations, 
like the International Water Association, like the International Council on Irrigation and Drainage, the World Water Council. These are organizations of tens of thousands, thousands of people. We bring them together. Their history groups, their archaeological groups, and it is about five themes. Theme one is water for people, water for services. It's drinking water irrigation. Theme two is waterscapes. It's like polders, irrigation, wetlands. Theme three is on waterways, ports, canals, linking marine to cities. Theme four is about water and energy, dams, electricity, hydropower. And theme five is about water visions. These are the five themes. And we, our ambition is to make these themes grow into clusters of researchers to bring the stories forward. For, not for historical reasons, but to make them relevant for planners and for policymakers. If you like to join, the address, my address is here. You are very welcome to submit a paper to come to Taiwan. The first announcement is out and it will be shared with you through the organization. Thank you very much.